Lucian has been banned out. We haven't seen Lucian banned for a while. There is the KO ban. Gambit actually taking that one away. Don't want to let Jezza through. So heavily focused on the mid lane here from both teams. Yeah, and actually was the thing happening to Jesses last week, and he early picked Lulu for mid lane. If SK Gaming locks in this Oriana, they're <laughs> doing the same thing again. As long as there's mid lane bans towards them, they want to make sure Jesses can get a comfort pick, and therefore he might even early pick it. Well, Oriana being hovered over, but you saw Jesse shaking his head. I don't know whether that was because he didn't want to play Ziggs or not, but maybe he's going to chase Peke's record. I did just tell him about it in the back, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I reckon maybe I could go for that one. We'll see how it works out for him. So, Gambit, now, they have a lot of options. Jax is available. We Jax, just saw it didn't Renekton work out last option match. Renekton for this top lane. Could see Caitlyn early on for, for Genji, of course. Thresh is open for Edward. Gragas could even be a possibility for him. And mid lane wise, Zix could be the option for Nick here. We're not sure what he wants to play. He used to play a lot of Nidalee. Of course, she's now disabled due to the rework and everything. So it could just be a safe mid lane like Zix. Maybe Darian's going to play Zix. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, I mean, you never sure, know. Could you have. never know. Well, Nick looks like he may be getting that Ziggs. We'll see, we'll see. We don't know where it's going to go, but it looks like Diamond has fallen back to a tried no, and no, no. trusted champion for Evelyn. Eight seconds no. to go to select, locked it in. There it is. So, Evelyn, even though Lee Sin is actually open, most teams take Lee Sin and Elise above Evelyn here, so I think SK Gaming will be fairly happy locking in either Elise or Lee Sin now for Svenskern next time. They don't actually have to do it. They can just pick the bottle in here. And with Lucian being banned away, Caitlyn comes in at such a strong pick, such a strong laner as well. I'm not sure what Gambit is going to pick against it to lane, or if the Gambit is just now going to look for the lane swap. And alongside him, Morgana has been a heavily yeah. banned support, but he has got through this time around and, and rated happy to lock that one in. So Morgana, of course, binding. Max range or max rank, you're just going to lock down the target for such a long time. It's very easy. Once you land a binding to collapse onto the target, especially with the likes of Oriana, just put the ball next to the binding. Boom, instant kill the target, if it's a squishy, of course. And with Caitlyn, you just provide even more safety. First in the laning phase, in the mid game afterwards, where you need to farm as Caitlyn and get you a late game point. And once you're in the late game, you have a black shield, you have your net, and you have your long range. It's going to be very, very hard for Gambit to actually kill Candy Panda then. So, Gambit, what are they going to do? What will their duo lane pairing be? Will it be Twitch? We haven't seen Genja playing that one too much in the LCS, but with Lucian taken away, it kind of makes him fall back to other options. Could be a classic lane matchup from Gambit here, along with Sona for Eddie. I actually really like Sona here in 4.10 because sustain is so important with the life deal. All the life deal items have been reduced, you know, so Sona comes in here, provides a lot of sustain in the laning phase, a lot of poke, so it's a very, very strong laning support. Also against the likes of Morgana, because Morgana won't really be able to do anything against you unless she lands a binding, and then the jungler comes in where Sona, of course, is a very squishy and immobile target. So generally, when you play Sona, there's a big sign on your back saying, please, come gank me and kill me because I can't do anything. Well, we see that Lee Sin has been picked up by Sven Skeren, and again, Aatrox for Freddy in that top lane. Happy with that one, despite Renekton being available. Jax is still out there. Renekton still out there. What is Darian going to aim towards? We'll find out in a second. So I'm going to say Jax or Renekton as the two options. Didn't expect Darius. Didn't log it in yet, though. It's Edward. He likes to troll around. Normally, there's a Teemo as well. It's a champion he played back in the summer 2013. I think the spring as well. And he was one of the few. I think I'm pretty sure he was one of the ones that started off the Darius craze in that top lane. Well, against an Aatrox. I mean, Aatrox is very strong in the laning phase. Has a lot of built-in sustain. Of course, he's passive. Late game, however, Aatrox becomes more of a, I'm no. just going to resurrect a few times. I'm just going to be a tank, jump in your face. I have my passive, got an angel. You have to kill me over and over. So Jax, again, strong laning phase for Aatrox. Jax just needs to farm as much as possible. But then late game, everything switches around and Jax becomes the monster. Aatrox becomes the kill me multiple times. We saw actually Freddy beating Renekton as well on that Aatrox uh, last week. So how do we gauge these two teams? Bit of a difference. And Gamut actually, if you were to look at this back in 4.9, would have the ultimate team right there, I feel. SK Gaming may be moving with the times. So first of all, we need to see how Gamut wants to do the early game. If they want to do 2v2 down this bottom lane against Caitlyn, because they have Sona as a very strong support in the laning phase. And then when it comes to team fights here, if Darian is split pushing, you have four members now with a lot of AoE damage together. Sona ultimate, you have the Ratatatat from Genja, of course Zex doing AoE damage all around the table, and Evelyn to start everything off here. So if SK Gaming gets, you know, caught out of position, if they're too grouped, and Evelyn lands a good crescendo or Diamond Box starts the fight, 
they can die very, very fast to this Gambit lineup here. And of course, Dar uh, Darian would be able to join in as well. So a lot of Wombo combo here for them. But also some big potential with, of course, split pushing Jackson. Twitch sneaking around. Well, with the one more common comes the pressure to actually land it and make Very it true. work. So now that the picks and, and packs and bands are in, do you still think SK will win this one? Tweet hashtag SK win or hashtag Gambit win. That's GMB win, remember, to at LOL Esports, and we'll see how you feel about their chances with these champions. 70% for SK Gaming previously. We'll see whether you guys stick to that one now that Eddie's back on Sona. I feel like SK Gaming, they have such a safe combo. Mm. I mean, all the lanes are strong. Aatrox is good in the lane. Orianna is very good in the lane. We keep talking about it. Of course, Caitlyn, long range, good poker early on. Strong laning phase as well. So all your lanes are actually very strong. And your team fight potential with, uh, team fight potential in the late game with Caitlyn, with Orianna, with the black shield from Morgana. Everything should collide or oh, fit together nicely for SK if they do get to this late game point. But Gambit might look to punish them in the mid game. Well, of course, SK under pressure. Millennium are chasing them hard in the league. This is definitely a win they need. But Gambit themselves, they were down in seventh position. And as we heard Freddy talking about, you know, their position doesn't really match actually how good Gambit is. If you look at them as a team, as the four members, you've only changed out Alex Itch in that team. This is still the team that took it. They came third place in Season 2 World Championships. They managed to get to all, well, obviously they weren't a, a, as a team before Season 1, but the team, that, since they've been around, they got to Season 2, Season 3 World Championships. One of the few teams that act have actually done that, stuck around and managed to compete at the top. They've got a lot of Intel Extreme Masters victories in their pockets, They're the most of any European and North American team, by the way. So they are probably, arguably, after Fnatic, the most successful yeah. European team. They just have, of course, having uh, a few problems right now. They're going to have a remake of the game, Pick and Bands, just going to be quickly swept through. Not too sure exactly what it was, but they're going to redo the game, which means we're going to have to rejoin it as well. So overall, Pick a man's coming in, history aside. SK Gaming, of course, are the one of the teams to beat. I say, obviously, Alliance are the team to beat right now. Alliance are going to be sat watching this one. They'd have seen, of course, Fnatic pulling out something new. Wicked's not really a player to be able to adapt to an AP top laner. He's got to stick to the bruisers. And maybe we're also seeing that with the likes of Freddy and maybe Darian in the top there, because this is the difference, you know, the fact that AP champions. A lot of teams have tried it back in the spring. It mm -hmm. didn't really work out. Obviously, they're not going with it this time around, but is it something we can see developing as the weeks go by? Of course, we've seen a lot of Gragas starting to make an appearance over in Korea and North America. We haven't seen it back in the top. Well, we saw Kevin do it back in the spring, and everyone was like, you're crazy! But now suddenly everybody's doing tank, it. Yeah. It was the full tank Gragas he used at the time. But So AP champions, of course, are strong in his top lane here, mainly actually because if you look at Gragas, if you look at Kale, and especially Lulu, even though you fall behind as the, on these champions, you still bring a lot of utility to the t to the table. We don't see these high or hard carry top laners, AP wise. You don't see like we did last go one year back to the summer split, where we of course had teams like like Lemon Dogs, where they used to play a lot of Lissandra top lane, which would then would go into team fights, explore the target. We don't see these kind of top laners or AP top laners. We see more the safe one, the utility ones. Then, of course, you have Kale, who goes late game and destroys everyone. But even if Kale falls behind, you still have intervention and you have your heal, so you're still a very, very strong champion, which seems to be the thing for AP top laners at the moment. Bring a lot of utility, good laners, and you have to be safe. Where with the Bruisers, we see a lot of self-sustaining Bruisers now. Renekton, Aatrox, we even saw Lee Sin top lane in NA. And then, we, of course, we have Jax, just because he is so good if he gets to his late game point, even though he doesn't have any sustain. So what is it that's forced this whole change in the top lane? Is it simply the itemization change? Of course, Doran's Blade was lowered 1%, down to 2% now in lifesteal. The shield can also just be picked up, and it's a standard item, but what is it that's created suddenly this ability power champions to be able to be used in this top lane? Well, first of all, again, the utility they bring to the table, mm. and the fact they can lane so well against these bruisers. Simply meant once we had the whole, we played Trundle, Shivana, Renekton every single game, State, people are like, okay, what can we pick against it? Who can lane against it? Who can then do well in team fights? Suddenly Lulu came into the picture. Suddenly Kale came into the picture, who could lane really well against the likes of Shivana and Trundle because they could never get to them. They could just poke, farm, get to team fights and kite them around. So therefore it starts up. And we might see some new counter picks come up because now people are saying, okay, what, what can we play against Kale? What can we play against Lulu? Find a new counter and then pick it into it and suddenly the meta 
will switch around again. I wonder if we'll suddenly see AD champions suddenly appearing in the top lane. Ezreal top. Who knows? I mean, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Game two about to get underway in Super Week. Five games today, 16 games overall in Super Week. And then, of course, this is just for Europe, North America. We'll follow starting out on Friday. So, SK as the blue, Gambit as the red. And we'll see whether anyone goes for an invade. Gambit, of course, as the blue team, generally go for a bit of an invade. But as the red, they are often passive. We'll see whether SK choose to go for something themselves. For now, though, both teams just scouting as nicely as possible here. And just another point about the top lane thing. The fact that the tanks actually have been nerfed, with Randy and Zoman being nerfed again, ups the value of these AP champions, who doesn't need these tank items because they bring utility from just basically their abilities, and therefore they also get stronger once again. So if you nerf some tanks, suddenly something else rises up. If you make the dragon better early game, if you make TP 40 seconds longer in the laning phase as well, suddenly Renekton comes back into the picture, being a very strong one-on-one -on -one laner because he has pretty much so much base damage early on. Every time there's some changes, something new pops up. We just saw the Zix top lane. I think you are just uh, basically giving a solid reason as to why it's so hard to balance games with 100 plus champions yes. uh, that uh, the game balance team, of course, have. Right now, though, Gambit doesn't look like, or will it be a late invade? It will be certainly It'll a, be a lane swap, up, that's for sure. We can see it's going to be potentially a buddy system, I feel. I think Darian's going to be joining Diamond in that jungle. I think this is a good idea by Gambit. Make sure Darien can pick up some farm in the jungle with Diamond and possibly go down to this bot lane once the tower is gone and just try and freeze the lane as long as possible with his teleport and just farm away so he dodges around this tricky Aatrox lane early and at the same time you don't have Twitch against Caitlyn. So you make sure now Ginja can farm because we talked about it last game how the item changes for AD carries. If you get an early BF sword on, Kate, on, on Caitlyn and then you get a Cutlass on the side of Twitch. Well, Caitlyn is going to be a lot stronger in the laning phase then. There's nothing Ginja can really do once or before he completes the play of the Drone King. So, of course, lane swap going to benefit him. Some really impressive poke there from uh, Fred Edward in that top lane. Fred Wood, I was about to say. Maybe Jed Wood. Jedwood would be uh, more of a UK thing. I'm not sure. Well, an Irish thing. Uh, I don't think we're going to claim that one. Freddy in that top lane. If you're not sure what the hell I'm on about, just Google Jedward and you'll be, you, you can laugh at <laughs> these <laughs> two stupid Irish people. Uh, Darian and Diamond, they are the buddy system in the jungle. It is going to be red buff for Diamond, of course. Darian just tagging along for the experience. Freddy was trying to do the same. He had a little peek towards the top and went, yeah, this is not going to work. I'm going to rejoin you back in the jungle, Svensko. So it's the thing Freddy always does in lane swap. He will go top lane at first, try and get some XP, try and get at least a little bit of farm, and then he joins in with Svenskan later on. This time he was forced to do it early because Edward poked him a lot. Now, multiple members moving into the jungle here of, of SK Gaming. Well, there's nothing to steal. They're going to go for the white instead, so they're making sure they get everything taken away from them. At the moment, Darian. Oh, Freddy's going to come around here. He's going to find them, actually. Will he go to the left-hand side? He doesn't see them. He's going to see them very late. He comes straight in, tries to pounce away from this one. Counter-Strike's not going to land there. Darian, I don't believe level the Bleak Strike. I can't actually check myself. But Freddy is going to escape anyway. He did have it, but he used it early. Then he used Counter-Strike afterwards, and Freddy managed to flash before Darren could flash stun him there. So flash gone, poke down Freddy. SK Gaming, though, because they spotted two members up in the top side of the map, are now starting this early dragon. Oh, Candy Panda and SK will be going for this dragon. You can see Jezus is going to move down there. So five members of SK Gaming taking for this dragon. The question is, can Gambit put pressure on towards that mid lane turret? They have the duo oh, pairing. Darian and Diamond actually coming around the side here. So it's going to be careful he doesn't walk into four members of Gambit. And they do manage to keep them away. Good secure, good early dragon for SK. So normally when we have these lane swaps, teams actually send, if they are in the top lane with the AD carry, they send the support, the jungle and the AD carry towards the dragon to stop the other team from doing the early, early dragon. But because Gambit went into the jungle of SK trying to kill Freddy, they were completely out of position and SK could just walk in, take the dragon, it's a good early start. Remember, it gives more gold here in 4.10 early on. So SK Gambit will be happy, even though they had to use the flash from Freddy. Well, I think Darian's gone the extended buddy system with Diamond here. He's still got his old L plates on, maybe. Darian. <laughs> Not sure if he's going to be sticking around for too long. They're already at level three. Maybe they're going to go for level four. You can see they're continuing. They're going towards the white now, but Svenskeren's already taken it. 
Yeah, so Darren has the issue that down his bottom lane, Candy Panda's not pushing. He's just freezing oh, the lane. Oh, he's going to walk oh, straight face him. in towards it. Svensko is like, nope, don't want any of that. But he does turn it around because there's a great dog binding. Dodges out of the counter strike and the rest of SK moving force forces the flash out of Darian. So both top laners without flashy and both trying to look for just some farm here. Darian moved up. Face checking Svenskern, nothing he could do against it. Had to just flash the wall because multiple SK members were nearby. But again, down this bottom lane, Candy Panda is just freezing it by himself. Which means, in Rated Obidus, Obidus top side here, making sure the tower won't go down to the dual lane of Gambit. And now they might be able to push it into the tower instead. Yeah, they have three members in this top lane the top lane and the jungler and the support. It's a weird mixed combo, but it's keeping this duo lane pairing of Edward and Genja at bay and forcing them back right now. We do see Darren, of course, was down at those right, uh, golems. Pretty low on health, so he's not going to join them. And it's a full invade for SK. They're going to go towards that red. They may even go towards Nick, but he's got advanced warning that they are coming. Candy Panda actually managed to get his wave into the tower now, so now it's going to start pushing towards Gambit. A little bit of a mistake from Candy Panda, unless he wanted to break the freeze by himself. But now the wave is going to push up towards Gambit. So it's very important Darren comes down to this bottom lane and picks up the big wave being built up by Candy Panda. So he gets some farm, because otherwise he's going to fall too far behind compared to Freddy. Nick in this mid lane. Svenskoen was sticking around. He's not going to cancel, he's just going to back off. So. Let's take a talk about these because Jezus and Nick, of course, been going at it. They're just farming away quite happily in that mid lane. Equal farm between them. Who's going to be the stronger of the two as this game develops? Because, of course, at the moment, they're both being fairly passive. You would expect Nick to put a little bit of poke down, which is exactly what he's doing. But Jezus is keeping a very good job at keeping track of the farm. Also, both of them are very strong in the late game. They just have a, some different things they give. I mean, Zix, of course, with the very safe wave clear, he can even use his bomb to clear a different lane here. So he's just all around a lot of wave clear. Zone potential. Both of them bring it. You put the ball from Orianna, you put down the minefield from the Zix, of course, to zone them away. And then you have a lot of AoE damage, a lot of skill shots so overall. They kind of bring the same, just more safe wave clear from the Zix. We bring more utility from Orianna with, of course, your shields we just saw here from, from Jesus. And of course, the ball delivery system maybe for Freddy. We'll see if he sure. loops in and You bring some, some engage too in that case. If as long as you get the ball the right place, you can use it as engage Launch for Oriana. Get good control. So both AD carry is actually going for Infinity Edge builds to start with, which does surprise me with a Twitch. Ah. Very surprised. I mean, I've seen some Twitch here in 4.10, not too much. Over in Korea, they still like to play it a lot, and it's. Blade of the Rune King into either Vintage as the second item or Ghostblade as the, as the second item, depending on if you go for late game style or if you're looking towards sneaking around, killing people in the mid game with Blade of the Rune King and Ghostblade. So we do see Genja, but he can do it because he's in the lane swap, so he's very safe. He can just start farming slowly up here. We'll look to complete the Infinity Edge as the very first item. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Genja, you have the rare recurrence, the rare game where he goes aggressive. But it is a rare occurrence. So he, if anyone, will sit and farm. He's not like he's going to go for the Blade Rune King and Yomus and then go looking for kills, go for Assassin style like we've seen Reckless do it. As it is, he's just going to sit and farm. This could be a long game. Could there very much be a long game? Gambit are going to be happy going late game. SK Gaming going to, have, going to be happy going late game too. I mean, you have Jack sailing up to become a monster, Twitch Zix, all very strong champions in the late game. And on SK Gaming side, you have Oriana and Caitlyn being so strong in the late game. So both teams should be happy enough going late game here. Oh, Darian being controlled in that bottom lane by N-rated. It does keep him away from the farm for a little bit longer. Freddy is going through the same pains in those top lane. This is the pains of the 2v1s. I remember so many times the uh, players talking about these horrendous 2v1 lane matchups they used to get and how they all hated it. And how they never seem to be able to get an even 1v1 duel. You can remember the tweets that Wicked would be trying to bait his opponent into, give me a 1v1, I'll, I'll take it. And I think very few would actually respond other than so as. Darian has <laughs> changed around, and this time we are going to see finally a 1v1 setup. So Genja and Edward will be taking their way down towards the bottom there. Darian just about getting, making sure he gets every last hit throughout this wave. And he did actually manage to go down to the bot lane, pick up some much needed experience and some farm. So he's not too far behind compared to Fred at the moment. He should hit level 6 on the very first minion from the next wave coming in here. So trying to keep Fally even just slightly behind for now. But still, better than nothing for Darren at least. Can't you just 
dodging out the dark binding. Diamond actually shadowing Svenskeren down this river. Ooh, Svenskeren turns around, doesn't get vision of him just yet, but he will do if he walks straight towards this bush. Diamond catches on towards him. He's going to have the assistance of his mid laner as well. Remember that Mega Inferno bomb, the bouncing bombs come through. Mega Inferno oh, no. will just dodge out of the side and he will get out free. So very good setup by Diamond here, moving into the bush so Svenskeren couldn't see him before he had to face check him and just went straight for him. And Nick, of course, trying to join in, but just on the wrong side of the wall here. Jess is a bit easier for him to just walk through the river and help Svenskeren out. Didn't have to use the flash either. Just took a lot of poke here with Dragon being alive. If he wants to try and go in for Smite, oh, Eddie Eddie caught out, Eddie taken low, Eddie going down. First blood, Candy Panda. The power of Morgana when you max your binding here. Snare people, I believe it's two seconds now here. And Sona is so squishy, she's so immobile. Once she gets snared, it's an easy target, easy kill, and a dragon. Now, even though Svenskan took so much damage, because they managed to get a pig on Edward, they could get the dragon. So, second dragon for SK. As remember, they got that early one. At the moment, we do see this bottom lane pairing. Gonna keep the pressure on. Freddy teleporting off the top. Didn't need to use it, of course, because he was already in position along with Darian. So they're gonna continue in that top lane, actually building very equal at the moment, there's a slight advantage for Freddy because he's got that chain vest built out there. So, junglers, let's take a look at those because we haven't seen a great deal of Diamond and Svenska and they've been trying to assist, trying to help out. They've had the buddy system, they've had someone tagging along with them, so that's delayed, of course, their experience as well as the top laners. We'll see how they build out because there's a number of options available to them. We've seen Frozen Hearts coming out now, of course, Ranians was the standard, but we have now, of course, uh, heavy bruiser comp in the top lane, so I wonder if they're going to switch back over towards those Randians or stick with a frozen heart. We can say both of them kind of do the same hmm. because they reduce their attack speed, but because they build a little lizard on both of them, I wouldn't expect frozen heart to be an early item. Could potentially be a late game one, but Randian so much should be the early one to get the extra HP. Normally, you only want to go frozen heart if you build ancient golem, otherwise, you simply have you're, you're too low when it comes to your, your HP, and it's too easy to, for targets to, or for people to take you down, especially if they do magic damage and you're fully build towards armor and very squishy in that case. So I expect Rendon's open for both the drunk, uh, for both junglers. Candy Panda taking rat attack tat damage there. Genja actually N-rated flashing to get the soul shackles down, but quick reaction flash from Genja quickly gets caught by another binding and tormented soil. Ace in the hole was also used by Candy Panda. Seems to be burning it down the moment it's off cooldown on towards Genja. So flash used by N-rated, but he actually forced both summoners away from Genja. He instantly flashed and then popped the ghost for the movement speed. Uh -oh. to just get away here. Edward needs to be careful once again. Binding once again catches on him. Piltover from Candy Panda. Eddie taken low. Soul shackles, of course, not available or the ignite, but Candy Panda has got both summoner spells available for this one. So both Gamut have to be careful in this bottom lane. It's oh that dark binding so close. That would have been the death of Eddie. Diamond coming down here. There is a pink wall, but it's from Gambit, so they didn't spot him yet. Look to Edward here. If he can land a crescendo onto Candy Panda or unrated, they could go for the kill. That's a swing in the vote, that's for sure. Gambit coming out on top in the votes now, despite SK having a 70% vote in the early phases. Edward got try out. Oh, crescendo! 90 caliber netted away from by Candy Panda. Beautiful. They did have Black Shield as well, so wouldn't get stunned here. Would be able yeah. to get away. So very good play by SK. Just staying around, playing it very safe. Instantly, Black Shields, they saw Edward move towards him. They expected the ult to come, and they forgot away safe. It's all down from Edward and Diamond wasted some time in the bot lane. And it's a game again, just looking to a long range poke with Caitlyn and Morgana. If they land a binding onto Edward now with 50% HP, they might go for the kill. Well, Red Buff was stolen away by Svensko and he snuck in towards that jungle while it was all happening down that bottom lane. They drew the attention of Diamond and now of course they just defended off their own Red Buff and he's going to steal that one away. So, double buffs being picked up by Svensko and uh, well, two Red Buffs I should say, not as much double buff because the blue of course will be gifted to Chesses the moment it spawns. Freddy in this top lane starting to put some pressure on towards Darian. And he needs to with re Atrox. I mean, he has to do better in the early game. The lane was fine for him because SK Gaming at the bottom lane frozen by Candy Panda. So Freddy actually managed to pick up some farm while Darren was just running around the jungle still. And therefore, Freddy also been slightly ahead in XP and farm throughout the entire game. But Darren been doing a very good job farming back here. Staying fairly even in CS at least. Another Dark Binding catches, followed by a Piltover, followed by 90 Caliber, followed by Ace Whoa. in the hole! The combo not quite enough from Candy Banner to get the kill. But we do see again the poke potential when you have BF Sword and a pickaxe. You have so much AD onto Caitlyn here. So you just, as long as you land everything, we just saw it on Edward. Almost goes down. 
without using anything else other than just purely your abilities here. Which sounded very stupid because of course you use your abilities. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Info can if Nightman caught out this time. Again, quickly reacted. Genja basically the one playing defensive duties at the moment, trying to throw down that casket and catch Candy Panda low, but instead Sven Skerin is now moving into position. He's spotted out by a ward and the rest of the gamut, they realize they're backing away. And that's so low for me. There's still flash on Edward. Still no flash on Genji, however, so if he's the target, he's gonna die very fast, especially with Svensson coming in. There's the binding. Crescendo just coming off cooldown. It may be used in a second. Soul Shackle goes down. That's gonna be Enrati catching on them. There's the double kill. Enrati taken so low, but gets a heal come off there. Eddie's in trouble. Candy Panda comes in. One more shot. Gets the double kill. It's Svenskeren that steals it away. And Mega Inferno Bomb not gonna land either because Enrati dodged away from that. So tower now as well will go down, very low already, picked up multiple kills first gear, double kill onto Svenskjorn, such a nice gank because they land so much poke onto the side of Gambit. And we have to say it, but he's been, hit, he's been hit by too many bindings in his lane here. Over and over again, the binding will land to him, poke him low, just a matter of time before SK sends someone down to actually kill him. Yeah, and rated setting up absolutely everything so far with those dark bodies, maybe proving why Morgana has been banned away in so many games over the last few weeks. Candy Panda, of course, also involved in 100% of that. Freddy keeping the pressure on his top lane, but Darian is happy to farm on that turret. The tower did not go down. Minions are going to take it down. There we go. And SK secure first turret of the game. And look here, Diamond actually looking to build Frozen Heart as his very first item after the Elder Lizard. A little bit surprised. I want to see how it works in teamfights, if he's going to be too squishy, if it's going to be too easy for someone like Jesus to kill him because he itemized so much into armor and so little HP. We need to see what it, what's going to happen. Or maybe he just keeps it as a Glacier Shroud for now, just to get some cool, uh, get some cooldown reduction, which is very strong on Evelyn, of course. Yeah, it gives him that 10%. Of course, Infinity Jets now completed. Jez is walking headlong into Gammy this time around. Can they get themselves their first kill? No, they cannot. Jez's flash is out of the danger there. Mega Inferno Bomb, of course, on cooldown as he was thrown to try and get the kill on end rate. Sven Skeren waiting for Diamond just off the side there does not catch on towards him. I think this blue buff is going to be coming up shortly, but more importantly, the dragon is now alive. And SK, of course, securing the last two, will be looking to take this one as well. Some very good wards in the jungle here of Gambit around the blue buff so they can see Gambit move in towards the dragon, trying to land a binding over the wall once again, set up a kill. And Diamond actually moved us up to this top lane, spotted by the pink ward, even though Dragon was alive. So Gambit, they don't want to try and fight for it. Didn't have ulti for Diamond. So it could be the deciding factor for him to simply say, okay, we're not going to fight. Yeah, free Dragon for SK game in there. So third one secured in 17 minutes, nicely done. Keeping on top of that respawn rate as well as the blue now coming up, of course. No one near this one from Gambit. So SK gonna take this one for free as well. Mega oh, Infinite Bomb, too early. way too early. Didn't have any wards, so just had to try and guess to see if we can get it again. Freddy now going very aggressive onto Darian. Ultimate used by Freddy. Can he have the damage down? Genja's going to try and turn this one back around. The counter strike will land. And Freddy, passive, should be dropped here. Genja, though, with the poison tick, not going to quite be enough to even pop the blood well. Still, tower should be able to go down here. Darian actually recalls. He has teleport. Let's see if he wants to go top lane and farm. Or if Gamma actually want to kill this tower up here. Just to get some global gold. Eddie is nearby. Diamond as well. Genji just by himself should be able to kill him. Let's Freddy teleport up there to try and stop him. Diamond stealing away the blue uh, buff first oh, tower of over. the game for Gambit. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the mid lane, SK reacting well, going straight towards that one. Shockwave flashed out off by Nick there. So let's go and try to catch on towards him, but they're going to take their second turret of the game. They're keeping pushing mid. Gambit have to react because Genji's not in lane here. There's already four members here. Freddy can join in with his teleport. Genji, he needs to move the entire way from top lane if he wants to join for a fight. For now, Gambit just staying at the tower, but Diamond is off to the side here. Looking to try and flank around them. We see him here moving in towards the mid lane. Got good wave clear. Nick is actually holding off at the side. He's staying out of range. You can see Diamond, as you mentioned, flanking around. This is going to be a 4v5. SK Gaming are being cautious on this one. They realize it's going to happen. They catch on towards Diamond. Quickly catching around. Genja's going to get focused on Sven and Kicks him back into the team. SK turn around. Quickly focus on towards him. Freddy goes in. Deep on that one. Basic comes out. The crescendo was used on nothing from Edward. And SK Gaming get that kill with nothing to go towards Gavin. So we talked about how Gambit had a Wombo combo they could use where they simply land all these ultimates together, do so much AoE damage. Nick didn't use his ulti. Oh. Edward delayed his ulti by such a long time that nobody joined in with Diamond once he started the fight. And then Genja oh. afterwards. Too greedy maybe. Diamond gonna catch on towards Sven Skeren. How's he gonna get away from this one? Red Buff was picked up. He's gonna get pounced on. Diamond's in there. 
there. Svenskeren tries to save that away. Diamond's now going to try and steal. Can he get away from this one? Darian jumps on towards him. He's got no passive now, but the Darian oh, Rager catches on him. And Rager comes around. Jezus joins the party. He gets himself the kill on Darian. So sneaky plays here by Diamond, picking up the double buff. Had to sacrifice Darian, but they got two kills. So, it's, so Gambit at least picking up something after the fight. But it was such an uncoordinated fight by Gambit. I mean, some members went in for the fight, the rest kind of backed away. I'm not sure if Nick was out of mana, but he didn't use his ult at all, even after four people got slowed by Diamond as the engage. Oh, not too sure, but he had it available. Kind of mana trying to clear out this bottom wave, keeping those towers safe. They still have the two tower advantage. And Gambit, they've regrouped. They're back in the mid lane, and they're trying to force something, anything out of SK. SK so good when it gets to late game. It's the strength where Gamma used to be. The question is, how's that decision making changed so much now that Alex Hitch is not in there? We hear that he is the key decision maker over in Ninjas in Pajamas. And of course, maybe that's something that's missing from Gambit and why they're being a little lackluster when it comes to late game team fights. I just went back and checked the team, but you were actually right. The ulti from Nick, two seconds off. Oh, so they engage, ulti. Not ready for him, couldn't join in. Edward did have his ulti, but weren't in a position to actually land onto someone. So they managed to do the Wombo combo here and just had to back away, give up a kill onto Genji. But of course, because they managed to get two kills onto SK, and now maybe onto Freddy on this top lane. Diamond wasn't spotted yet. He wants to see if he can go aggressive. Bloodwell not available from Freddy, so if they catch him, he will go down. Diamond looking to flank once again. He knows that he's going to be in that bush, but he's going to be easily. Easy escape for him, that tower, of course, within range. And they know they're going to have to go diving in towards that turret. But if they put enough punishment on yeah. towards him, they could take this turret down. As long as they get a stun onto him, they should be able to kill him. There they go, jump, leap, strike, goes on towards him. Freddy, very low, he's going to go down. It's Darian that gets the kill. Nice setup here. You see, Darian just walking in, pops the counter strike and waits for Freddy to jump. And then he follows with him, stuns him. But SK Gaming here with two members from Gambit on the top side are pushing this bot lane here. They're going to react. You can see they're going in towards it, but Mega Inferno Bomb is available. We'll clear that one out. Candy Panda tanking up some of the turret hits. The rest of Gambit do react. That's going to be the inner turret, I feel, in the bottom lane going. There it is. Darian taking that one down the second of the game for Gambit. Really, really nice play using the six bomb as well to clear the wave here. Now Darren recalling. Has teleport as well. Would be able to join in in case a fight should happen. There's no teleport on the side of Freddy. So we might see Gambit trying to start a 5v4. Diamond once again is off to the side. No ulti though. He's going to see if he can flank it towards there. He's in a hole and then he's still not quite enough to take him down. Candy Panda now is going to back away from this one. Genja using the rat attack tat to clear the wave. So that won't be available. I don't think Gambit want to fight now. No, and they have no wards oh, area here. So oh, Diamond oh, is fighting. Oh, caught out in the binding. Kick straight back in there. He will go down. Soul Shackles was used. Darian not going to get involved in that fight. Diamond simply caught out by a pink ward. It's not the first time in this game where the superior ward control from SK give them kills, so at least make sure Gambit don't know exactly know where they are, not sure where they can move safely or not. This time around, Diamond just got a little bit too close, and therefore the binding landed, and now this tower should go down. Just one more hit from Candy Panda and backs away. So a kill and a tower now for SK. Dragon is up in 20 seconds' time. The Bomb is back up, so we'll see where the Gambit. Fancy it. There's teleport available for Darian. SK Gaming, though, already moving into position. They're a little bit early on that one. Not up for another 10 seconds. Their timers are a wee bit off, but it doesn't seem that Gamut are going to go for it. Look at Genja. He's heading towards the top. Look at Darian here. Playing it safe, actually. He knows they are around the Dragon area. Doesn't want to push it up too far. Off the risk of getting ganked, so backs away. Smart play by him. But Gamut really needs to get in and play these two pink walls from SK Gaming. They're playing so smart at the blue buff and just right behind the blue buff as well so they make sure all entrants towards the dragon are warded and controlled by them and therefore they can just wait around and look for the pig if Gambit wants to move towards the dragon or the river. So Gambit needs to get in. Once they get the chance, they've cleared. Diamond for now. Just heading on in red a little bit. Just a little bit of poke, a little bit of taps. Freddy moving back towards that top and making sure that the Baron Edward's starting that Baron off to make sure he puts a couple of hits on towards Svenskeren. Darian jumping straight on Freddy from that tri bush. That's going to force SK back. There's a big wave pushing in that bottom lane. It will clear itself out, though, which is why Gambit are actually moving to try and go defensive. SK not able to push towards his top outer. It's absolutely the one they want. We saw it last game. Once you get all the outer turrets out of the way, you just move one step in, put some more deep wards here, and then you start picking off people, and they're moving now. Multiple members up to this top lane. Jesse's still in this mid lane, pushing it out by himself, but should be able to join the team fairly fast.
if needed be. Teleport is ready for Darren. He sends it down to this bottom lane to defend it. And just farm as much as possible. The tower is so low, no point uh -oh. for Gambit to do anything. Edward oh! Now kicked in straight away. Soul Shackles comes out. That's going to be enough to lock him down, or will it? Freddy goes in to make sure the job is finished. Darian teleports in. He comes around the side, but the rest of his team are in trouble now. Freddy's going to get locked out. Bloodwell was popped, but SK Gaming are in charge right now. Freddy's so low on health. Candy Panda finds Genja out in that. Try can't stealth up away like he used to on Twitch. Now Nick's in trouble. Jezzes has locked him out. He's going to go down. One more hit's enough, and Jezzes gets the kill there. It's a three for zero. SK in full control. And everything starts with Edward actually being slightly out of control here. SK went on to him. We saw the kick flash from Svensk and is kicking back to the team. They get a kill. Darren Tilbert in behind them. But by this point, game were too weak to fight. And now this tower is gone. The turret's going to go because Darian's still pushing the mid lane. You cannot split push against five members, Darian. Somebody tell him he's trying to get something because he realized obviously he yeah. can't, he can't defend off against five members. So he managed to get a turret out of it and something out of it for Gambit. But that's a big problem. Diamond, though, still tracking the entire SK team. It doesn't fancy that. They knew it's the whole push. <laughs> but it's buying time. Towers. Darian may get an inner turret. This was a great play by Darian saying, I don't, I have nothing to defend top lane with. I'm just going to go mid lane here. Picks up two towers now for Gambit. A lot of global gold. Tilbot wasn't used by Freddy. He was way too low to do anything. So while they lost the top tower, or lost all the top towers, they still actually give away two towers mid here. So first, everybody's a guy they want to engage on to. Beautiful kick flash from Svenskern. And Edward, Edward tries to hold on and raid it. Good flash here, which means hold now gone from Zona and her team fighting potential is pretty much it's out. Freddy with Aatrox is becoming just this tank where you have to go in, you have to die pretty much to buy time, come back to life, and just try and stay alive. Now, until he builds a Garden Angel, he's just going to do it for even longer and manage to at least buy some time for the rest of the team to pick up some kills. And Genji, Genji on his Twitch. Mixing up his build a little bit, I'm not sure. That, I mean, he's still going towards the Infinity Edge, but also has to seal towards either Static or Phantom Lancer. So he actually didn't complete anything, except for right now. Well, he got the Infinity Edge, but he's very far behind build-wise. Yeah, gigantic difference. You can see Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Last Wars, Bahama Zerka Greaves, all completed for Candy Panda, along with the upgrade on those boots and Alacrity, I think it is on those. Genja, meanwhile, as you say, way out of position here. Oh, Nick gonna get pulled in. Shockwave, that's him dead. Eddie goes down. And SK, Baron. it's cleanup duty time. They're gonna get the Baron. This is what SK Gaming as a team does really, really well. Once they get the lead, they know exactly where to be in the map. They know where to push, where to put the wards, and just spot out the enemy team. Get the picks they need, take the objectives, and then just close out the game. Diamond, he needs to steal this one. Oh, can't get in there. Dark Binding catches him out. He can't get within range. And SK Gaming locked that one up. Darren again, though. Darian's just being a nuisance. Teleport top, though, no. Freddy's going for it. He's going to try and finish the game right now. Gets on towards the Nexus turret. The rest of SK Gaming are going to follow. And Freddy has a hell of a lot of damage. You can see that's one Nexus down. Edward's it's not going to do anything about this one. It's Five only Edward, Nick. as you mentioned. He's going to get himself the second Nexus turret down. He's just going to back away from this one. He's got Spence Karen with him. They can finish the game right here. It's 28 minute mark. The rest of Gambit are back. And I think that's going to be SK back in a way. It's forced Darian to stop pushing them in, though. So we got both Nexus Tower here. Mid lane is being pushed now by Enraded and Candy Panda joining in with the rest of the team. There's no minions just yet for them here in this mid lane. Just waiting for them. Trying to see if they can get this tower down. All five members are alive from Gambit, but remember SK Gaming, they do have the Baron buff. They do have the Baron buff. It gives them the health regen, and they're just going to tank that one down. That's another inhibitor to it down. Ratatat -tat was just used by Genja. Didn't really do a great deal of damage and catch anyone, so that's another ultimate wasted. Dark Binding not finding his target. Super Minions continuing to push that top lane, which Diamond's trying his best to keep away from the Nexus, but the rest of SK are moving in. It's a five-on-five -five defensive force for Gambit. Oh, they need to go in for this fight here. Darian, Strike. Oh no, he was locked up and slowed down. Now he's going to get caught out, kicked away from the fight. Diamond gets found out. Freddy does go down though. It's a counter, but it's only his blood. Wow. Well, top way yes, comes out from Svensko. Uh, sorry, from Jezza's captain on towards him. Dark binding on Nick. He gets on the fountain, but it's SK Gaming again with another dominant victory over Gambit, just like they did two weeks ago. So very nice lane swap early on here. SK Game managed to actually get a lot of farm onto Freddy with it. Candy Panda was just raising the bot lane. He was very, very happy. And as soon as we got to the dragon fights, as soon as we got to the team fights itself, SK Game were just a stronger team. Especially their wards in this game here, they kept catching Gambit out of position over and over and over again. And Gambit could just never get the real team fight. Fantastic performance once again. SK Gaming take victory and continue now towards that top table position. Can they track down Alliance Alliance?
Now, the entire Super Week ahead of him, of course. Four games for every team. That's the first one for SK being picked up. We're going to be seeing them a lot this Super Week. Gambit Gaming, meanwhile, down that bottom lane. Bottom half of the... Bottom lane. Bottom lane. Well, it's the bottom lane of the table. The bottom half of the table. They have to turn their frowns upside down and get themselves some wins because they're in danger of slipping out of the playoffs right now and it's not a position that they like to find themselves in. It's not a position we're used to seeing Gambit in. So if you just look at this game itself, I mean, the picks from Gambit, if they got some late game, would have been very, very strong. They had the whole wombo combo thing we talked about where you land the Evelyn ult as the engage, Eddie follows up with Crescendo, and you have Ratatat -Rat going in, you have Zix bomb coming and just blowing everything up. They tried to do it in the mid lane, well, Diamond was sneaking around mm. them, he got into the back here. Four members actually got hit by his ulti. But then Eddie wasn't in position to land his crescendo. There was two seconds cooldown or something on Nick's ult. So he wouldn't be able to join in either, at least not properly. And then once again, as he popped out of stealth, it was easy for SK to just turn to him, kill him, and win the team fight itself. So overall for Gambit, it's a little bit too weak lanes here, and they didn't manage to get the early game going at all. Well, we'll speak about SK Gaming. Shox is standing by with 